Then we just have to wait for the people. Yeah. Now it's turned over there. <laughs> this is a good day for the computer to be uncooperative. <laughs> Yeah, well, it should work anyway. Okay. <laughs> we are live. It's working. We are we are live. <laughs> I don't see any comments yet, but I'm assuming there's people. Where's the little insights thing? The little... I would bring it over if. I could. Uh, yeah. If we magic it over. <laughs> Can we magic it over? <laughs> I think I think I need new batteries in this thing. Yeah. Oh, possibly. Yeah. Ooh. There, ooh, there we go. <laughs> uh, eh. uh, oh, uh, no. Nope. <laughs> never, maybe. Hey, Anne. Okay, I okay. guess we do have some people. <laughs> some people here there's at least. There's Anne, there's Lorraine. Hi. <laughs> Don't mind us, we're just fighting with the computer. <laughs> Tyler's having mouse problems. Yeah. And uh, it's not the kind he needs a trap for, so. He says he needs a new battery. Yeah. We'll, we'll get on that. I know we're <laughs> So welcome to Tuesday. It is another gorgeous Tuesday here in Alberta. A little cooler today. And boy, I could see that wind blowing outside my window pretty much all day. But it's uh, it, for uh, this time in October, boy, you can't complain. Can't complain about the weather. Wouldn't do you any good even if you did. So <laughs> Anne's waving. Hi, Anne. So, something that I've had a few requests about today, but um, a little bit different for you. So, I want to ask, do you live with a fidgeter? You know what I mean? The sort of person where you're trying to watch TV and it's right in that interesting part and all of a sudden it's like this well yeah or you know clicking on things and that sort of thing so anybody who lives with or maybe you are one yourself someone with restless hands or someone who just needs to have something to do with their fingers to calm down um we're going to call them fidgeters for right now so a while ago there was a, a a trend sort of making its rounds of making fidget quilts and these were aimed specifically for uh people with dementia or alzheimer's because quite often um conditions like that make someone want to feel stuff they, they make them restless their fingers are restless but i was thinking the other day that that's we're limiting ourselves when we do when we talk like that because i think everybody has that need to touch beautiful things to feel things that are comforting that that help to relieve that internal stress that we're all feeling so today we are going to just kind of walk you through some of the things that you can do when it comes to making a fidget quilt. And I'm going to switch over really briefly, show you what I came up with. Make sure I push the right button. There we are. Came up with this for my husband on the weekend. I've already have to make a few changes on it. So, so this was what I developed you can see it's not very big this one's about 18 by 18 but the first thing you want to do is think about your recipient who are you going to make your quilt for are you making it for someone in the home in your family are you making it for someone that um Let's see if I can find some more of these comments. They're not showing up as well as I would like, like them to. There we are. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Um, 
Are you making it for someone in a care home? Are you making it for a child? Uh, you know, one of those one of those really active ones that has trouble calming down before bed. Are you making it for a uh, middle of life person, an end of life person? You have to take a lot of things into consideration when you're working on these. For example, if you're making one for a child, you don't want to put on things that would come off easily, that they might pop in their mouth. If you're making one for someone in a care home, you want to speak with the people who look after them first off, because a lot of care homes are going to have very specific requirements about what materials things like this are made out of because they have to go through kind of a communal laundry situation so once you establish all of your parameters then you can go to town so the next thing once you've got that sorted out you got figured out in your head who you're making this for i'm making this for my husband so he doesn't drive me crazy tapping his fingers and clicking the lever on his recliner when I'm trying to focus on television. Okay, then you want to ask yourself, how big do I want to make my quilt? Most often, they are about this size. This is, as I say, 18 by 18. Sometimes if they're to go over someone's lap, perhaps in a wheelchair, you make them a little bit bigger. What I've seen or heard of is 24 by 24 is a good size. But maybe if you're making it for a child and you want it to be kind of a cuddle quilt to help calm them down for bed, you might want to make it longer and just put the, the fidgety part at the top so that then it can drape over them and they can snuggle underneath it, but still have the advantage of having the tactile things. So that's basically what we're doing when we're making these is we are not quilting with our eyes this time. We're not really as concerned with what things look like, but we're quilting with our fingers. It's all about the touch. It's all about the tactile senses. So what can we use? The first thing we want to do is we want to piece our quilt top. And I worked with about six inch squares on mine some of them ended up being a little bit smaller because i ran out of backing fabric but that's okay so you want a decent sized square and you want to start playing with textured fabrics and dawn has got a little bit of an array behind me but obviously one of the first things we're going to look at is our cuddle fabric it's soft it's cool when you stroke it, it moves, it gives different reflections when the light plays on it, depending on which way you push it. I've got here a piece of good old fashioned ultra suede, and that has a different feel to it altogether. And my husband doesn't like this one. I like the colors on this one. But it's, I don't know if you'll hear it, that's like a taffeta. He didn't like that one. So this is why I say, talk to your recipient if you can, or take their likes and dislikes into consideration. I thought that was kind of cool. Woohoo! This guy here, and I know we have a bolt of it behind, this is a brown um, cotton velveteen. Again, something with a bit of a nap, kind of tickles the fingers. We've got a little bit of fur, fun fur down here. And I actually sewed this together. There's two pieces so that on one side, the nap went one way and on the other side, the nap went the other way. So when you run your hand across it, you have two different textures. And some good old lining fabric, something shiny and silky. Read your stash, see what you've got and start with that as your base. But what happens if you don't have a lot of fabrics with texture built in? You can always add texture. This one is just a piece of quilting cotton, but I put a little bit of quilt batting behind that square before I made the whole quilt, 
and I quilted that because that gives it a texture of its own. You can see this piece of satiny fabric, I pleated. So again, when you run your fingers over it, you get the different sensations of folding one way, folding the other way. One of the requirements that I had when I started uh, building this quilt was I didn't want anything too noisy. So you could put some crackly plastic underneath one of your blocks if you don't mind a little bit of sound. My whole plan was to make things quiet. This has a slight sound when you run your fingers back and forth across it. This one in the middle was just a piece of quilting cotton and what I did was satin stitch stripes down it in a coordinating thread because hey why not so that as you run your fingers across it you can feel those they're sort of silky and of course you could use a decorative stitch if you wanted to and then you would have maybe little hearts or little um, uh, little lozenges, whatever shapes you feel like making, but it gives the fingers a slightly different touch. So you're going to gather up all of your fabrics. You can work, I've I grabbed a piece here as well. You could put a piece of felt on. I would use a piece of cotton first. Cut out a little shape with your felt. Hand stitch it down. That's another texture, hand stitching and embroidery. If you have pieces of fabric that are special to that person, maybe a favorite shirt, a favorite blanket, don't be afraid to put a piece of that in your quilt as well. It's all about the memory triggers and the calming effect of having something familiar to touch when you're feeling a little bit anxious. So we get our fabrics together, we decide on our layout, and you can see it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward, just big pieces of fabric sewn together. You sew them together, press them if necessary. Some of these fabrics, like these guys, aren't going to take a lot of pressing. We don't have to be too, too particular about it. And then when you get that done, if you are <coughs> insetting something like these beads on a cord, you can set that into the seam at either end or you can always stitch that on carefully afterwards. I kind of like to have some things that are inset and we'll talk about the embellishments that way. I got heck about this one because the beads don't slide fast well enough because they're wooden beads and they're a little rough inside. So I'm going to I'm going to substitute those. You get your quilt built and then you can layer your quilt with a lightweight batting and something you probably won't hear me say very frequently you do not have to put a lot of quilting on these you basically just want to quilt it enough to hold the layers together so i added another texture i've got a flannel back on this one two purposes on that it feels nice and if it's set down on your lap or on your front or on a blanket, it's not going to shift around on a person. It has a little bit of cling to it. And I have just stitched in a grid on this. So not too much for quilting on that. Ooh, yeah, I know that's a different one, isn't it? And then I put a proper binding on because I like the way a binding finishes things off. It makes it look like it's done. Then, the fun part. Now you can start adding the twiddly things, the fidgety things that people like to play with. And there are so, so many possibilities that you can either sew on or sew into your quilt. I know Dawn's got a few of them back behind me. I'll grab some. Blanket binding, good old satin blanket binding. 
How often have we heard of little little ones going to sleep, stroking the edge of their favorite blanket because it's got that satin binding on it. Um, what else have we got? We've got some ruffled elastic on cards up there. And then, of course, what I used, satin cord, has a texture all of its own. Plus, you can thread things on it. And then, don't forget our button soup. If you're one of those people who doesn't have a button stash and you need to perhaps buy something a little bit of a different size to what you're used to, we sell, we call it button soup. We have this big bin of odds and ends of buttons. And so basically buy the scoop in a bag and so you can get whatever you like. Um, you can see on my quilt, I had some fancy buttons here. There's a really nice big coat button that you just kind of want to run your fingers over. I've got this guy, looked almost like a tooth. And I actually stitched that on with a heavy piece of yarn. So he wobbles around a little bit. Okay. And another coat button with a particularly saw smooth top that I think is fun. This is the time to add things like fringe. That really doesn't show very well on the camera. Just kind of a decorator fringe, a little scrap that I had. <clears throat> you could put some lace on. Try and keep it soft, though, because we're trying to put things on our quilt that are pleasing to touch. But maybe you're making this for someone who, who loves lace, who's worked with lace all their life. Put a scrap of lace on. I'll let them stroke that. I have found, I love this guy. Look at this bead. That was in our button soup. There's a nice big round bead that could be sewn on. Doesn't have a very big hole, but makes an interesting lump. And I was thinking about this when I was preparing for this. There is no reason why you couldn't use a double layer of fabric, put this guy inside before and sew it together so he's between the layers so that when you want to move it around you can move it around between the layers of fabric and you don't have to worry about that thing coming off of its string or its cord getting lost getting in the way stepping on it you know it's kind of like lego here's something that i will probably substitute my beads for these are the the finished plastic bobbins from the long arm area and they slide nicely back and forth on a cord so look around your house and see what other fun things you could fasten on that are going to give a little bit of texture a little bit of interest if you want to kind of go all out and you have something meaningful we do have a few of the disney buttons i grabbed the frozen ones so for a little guy that's both texture and visual, it's a figure that they're going to recognize. Here's another one. What do we got here? Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Wow. So, and those are buttons. They have the shank on the back. Just make sure you sew them on really securely. And if it's for a little, little person, don't leave them alone for too long. With it. Okay. And, of course, there's no reason why you couldn't put a zipper in. If that was inset either side of your quilt block, that's a zipper that could be opened and closed. A great thing for a fidgeter to play with. There. So, use your imagination. See what you can come up with and let it evolve as i say i made this for my husband and he test test drove it we d decided that some of the fabrics he didn't care for he liked the things that slid along a cord so i think i'm going to add a few more of those the whole idea behind this is to help reduce the stress in whoever is receiving the fidget quilt so you always want to keep that very first point in mind 
you're making this for someone. Maybe you're making it for yourself. And that's okay too. Me, when I, my hands are restless, I tend to stitch. I like to be productive. I do my embroidery or um, I'm into hand applique right now. But that's okay. Everybody needs a little bit of something tactile to uh, run through their fingers. So the sky's the limit here when it comes to the things that you can put on. But keep, first of all, who you're giving it to in mind. And secondly, make sure it's safe. Make sure it's something that is going to withstand a lot of handling. So let's point you down here again. These buttons were sewn on with a polyester thread double strand. For an adult, they're going to last a pretty good long time, especially doing this. If I, this is going to someone who's apt to be tugging and pulling on it, maybe I would want to sew that on with my go-to if I need strong thread to sew this on and I haven't uh, thought to pick up a spool of our buttonhole twist or hand quilting thread, is dental floss. We've all got it sitting around the house and it is plenty strong for sewing things like those buttons on. So, there you have it. A quick, simple, easy, and useful project for uh, that you can whip off in one day. You scour your house, and uh, each one can be different. I think they're great projects, and they're great for any age level. So, I think I just might have to make a couple more, because... Uh, especially these days pretty much everybody likes to have something soft to handle so we can maybe do a few variations on this instead of the big squares like this if you're making it for a little guy why don't you sew your fabrics together and cut it into a shape shape it like a teddy bear all kinds of possibilities that's the basic principles though when it comes to fidget quilts um, Keep it simple, keep it tactile, keep it safe, and keep the recipient in mind when you're working with it because everybody's a little bit different. So that's what I have for you today. Um, tomorrow is Wednesday, so Sandy will probably be up with some more wacky jokes. I know we've got a full day here in the studio tomorrow with some classes. Um, if there is anything we can help you with, if you have any questions about things or you want to, a little more detail about anything you see on our Facebook put, um, live sessions, just give the store a phone call. So till then, enjoy the nice weather. Have fun. Uh, Thursday coming up, I'm going to be teaching Aunt Annie's. So it's hard to believe it's another month gone and uh, another block to make so i will see some of you then i know uh until then take care everybody and have a wonderful tuesday and thanks for joining us on our facebook